Dear colleagues, welcome to the second presentation of uh, We Oncologist ESSO Presents. My name is Gilbert Morgan, and I have the pleasure to present a great friend of mine, Dr. Andre Papa Constantino from the Karolinska University Hospital and Karolinska Institute. Andre? Thank you. Good evening and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing about adjuvant chemotherapy in soft tissue sarcomas and the challenges we're facing in this uh, field. I would like to thank We Oncologists and the European School of Oncology for the honor of um, having this presentation today and personally Gilbert Morgan for putting all this effort into having this educational series and helping us oncologists with continued education. Uh, I have no conflict of interest to report for this uh, presentation. So uh, sarcomas uh, are very rare tumors and they consist of about 1% of all uh, adult malignancies. They're usually divided into soft tissue sarcomas and bone sarcomas with soft tissue sarcomas being more common and account for about 75%. 10% um, of sarcomas are usually bone sarcomas and the remaining 50% uh, accounts for gastrointestinal stroma tumors. Uh, soft tissue sarcomas uh, arise more often in, in the extremities um, and the trunk wall. And about 60% of soft tissue sarcomas uh, arise in the, in the extremities, whereas soft tissue sarcomas in the retroperitoneum and the abdomen only account for about uh, 20%. Most of the data we have regarding adjuvant chemotherapy in soft tissue sarcomas comes from studies that mainly include uh, um, soft tissue sarcomas of the extremities and the trunk wall. So one can say that the data is more um, convincing in extremities uh, and trunk wall than when it comes to uh, uh, soft tissue sarcomas of the retroperitoneum where the data is quite uh, scarce. For example, if you can see on this table, it was published in 2009 uh, in an article by Jean-Yves Blay and Axel Lesson. And you can see that um, the majority of the studies uh, performed had included uh, patients with soft tissue sarcomas in the extremities. So L stands for limbs, so extremities, T for trunk wall, H, N, head, neck, R, retroperitoneum, V, viscera, and U, uterus. Uh, there's only one study uh, published by National Cancer Institute, the one in the last row, that included only patients with soft tissue sarcomas of the retroperitoneum. And then there's a study investigating adjuvant therapy in uterine sarcomas performed by the gynecologic oncology group. Um, it is also worth noting that um, um, doxorubicin was uh, the main agent used in the adjuvant setting in all these uh, studies. Uh, just to understand a bit more on the complexity of uh, soft tissue sarcomas in um, 1950s, so more than half a century ago, so Stanford Cade made a report on uh, on um, 153 cases of soft tissue sarcomas. And as you can see, they reported some different subtypes, but still quite um, uh, uh, few. But today with the, the classification of diseases by WHO, uh, we can see that um, uh, there are reported over 80 different types of uh, soft tissue sarcomas. So this disease is very uh, heterogenic and many different subtypes are included in what we call soft tissue sarcomas. Uh, to make things even more complicated, the different subtypes can have uh, different uh, sensitivity regarding chemotherapy. And this is a table um, from the British uh, guidelines from 2010 where you can see that, for example, synovial sarcoma is a soft tissue sarcoma that is considered sensitive to chemotherapy, whereas clear cell sarcoma and alveolar sofa sarcoma are not so chemosensitive. Uh, this has to be in mind when designing trials for soft tissue sarcomas and also when it, interpreting results, because of course the, the existence of these different subtypes can influence the results and dilute the potential effect of uh, adjuvant chemotherapy in chemosensitive tumors. Uh, 
It is also very good to notice that even within the same subtypes, for example, liposarcoma, different entities can have different chemosensitivity. For example, myxoid liposarcoma has a better, uh, has a, a higher hemosensitivity compared to the differentiated liposarcoma. Uh, when discussing about um, adjuvant chemotherapy, uh, not only in sarcoma, but in most um, malignancies, uh, there's uh, a classification of um, the different types depending on the risk of uh, recurrence and relapse, what we call a risk assessment. Uh, the latest uh, SMO clinical guidelines in soft tissue and sarcoma present um, tumor-related factors such as the size of the tumor, the grade, for example, higher grade is related to higher risk for relapse and metastasis, the depth of the, uh, the tumor, and uh, also uh, the resectability of the tumor, because depending on where the tumor is, it can affect the possibility to uh, achieve clear margins. Uh, so Robert Grimer in 2006 published an article saying that size does matter in sarcomas. And when they, when they looked into the size of the tumors, they reported that uh, patients with soft tissue sarcomas of the extremities uh, larger than 25 centimeters had an 8.5 times uh, greater risk of dying than patients with smaller tumors where that were smaller than 5 centimeters. Uh, in Scandinavia, uh, we also used a more um, expanded uh, uh, risk assessment where in addition to the tumor and the treatment related uh, uh, factors. We also look at some uh, biological factors such as invasion, that is vascular invasion, the presence of necrosis and infiltrating growth factor. This is based on a publication by Jakob Engela in 2007. And as you can see, larger tumors, presence of vascular invasion, presence of tumor necrosis and infiltrative growth pattern were associated with the increased risk of um, metastasis after five years. And in sarcoma, relapse and metastasis is uh, related with the worst prognosis. The, the, the cornerstone of treatment today is um, uh, surgical remover of the sarcomas and with modern um, surgery, um, improved local control and survival is achieved by extended compartmental excision. However, 40 to 50% of the patients with large, deeply situated and high grade soft tissue sarcomas uh, still develop distal metastasis. And that's why um, the discussion is uh, made regarding the need for adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, generally, in oncology, adjuvant chemotherapy aims to eliminate micrometastasis uh, and this way improving um, distant recurrence and overall survival. However, in, in sarcomas, this is quite controversial, uh, mainly due to the lack of big um, uh, uh, randomized controlled trials, which of course is difficult to perform due to the rarity and the heterogeneity of the disease. Um, and now I would like to just to give you an insight on what data we have. So I will be presenting you with two meta-analyses, some randomized trials, uh, a single arm trial uh, regarding adjuvant therapy in soft tissue sarcomas. So the first meta-analysis I would like to present to you, it's uh, an older um, publication in The Lancet from 1997 where 14 studies were included and a bit more than 1,500 patients uh, were included where they gathered individual patient data to perform the analysis. What the authors report was a statistically significant improvement in distance-free survival. You can see the, the curve on the left uh, where um, distance-free survival at 10 years was improved from 60 to 70 percent with the addition of adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, 
Uh, the absolute um, improvement in overall survival at 10 years was only 4% and it did not reach um, statistical significant. Uh, a later meta-analysis in 2008 was uh, uh, basically updating the previous meta-analysis and this time 18 uh, randomized controlled trials were included and individual patient data from a bit more than 1900 patients were analyzed. Um, and you can see here that um, uh, chemotherapy, either with only doxorubicin or doxorubicin iphosphamide or when um, all patients pulled together um, had um, a benefit regarding local recurrence, distant recurrence and overall uh, recurrence and survival. Uh, you can see, for example, that um, distant recurrence was improved by 10% with the combination chemotherapy. And when all patients that received chemotherapy were combined together versus the ones that did not receive chemotherapy, um, it was calculated that 12 patients needed to be treated with one of these two types of adjuvant chemotherapy in order to prevent one distant recurrence. Regarding overall recurrence, again, you see an, a benefit uh, that is even more improved with the combination therapy. And here, 10 patients were needed to be treated in order to prevent one overall recurrence. Uh, survival was also improved by chemotherapy. And when all the chemotherapy patients together were analyzed versus no adjuvant chemotherapy, it was uh, calculated that 17 patients needed to be treated in order to save one. So one can see that there is still uh, some benefit of the chemotherapy, especially in the combination arm. Um, then uh, going to some representative studies, I would like to present the first study. It's an EORTC trial that included patients between 1995 and 2000. 351 patients were included and they had both um, grade 2 and grade 3 soft tissue sarcomas and the sarcomas could arise from any side. Uh, five cycles of doxorubicin 75 uh, milligrams per square meter and iphosphamide 5 gram per square meter were um, given to these patients. In contrast to the meta-analysis we just um, discussed, this uh, um, randomized controlled trial did not show any benefit um, regarding overall survival or relapse-free survival when adding adjuvant chemotherapy. However, uh, one can uh, try to um, elaborate on what the reasons of this discrepancy between um, the meta-analysis and, and the randomized trial would be. For example, with a meta-analysis, more patients are pulled together so we can get more power. So it might be a question of power in this randomized trial. There were patients with both grade two and three sarcomas included. So uh, maybe the patients included were not at a high enough risk. So maybe some patients with lower risk uh, kind of dilute the effect for the high risk patients. I thought my dose might be considered a bit low and maybe it, it, the, the chemotherapy cycles were not uh, long enough. So the question is, um, does it really mean that adjuvant chemotherapy is not effective in sarcomas or does it uh, mean that uh, maybe we should identify the patients better and maybe we need more effective chemotherapy? Uh, moving on to uh, another study that was performed uh, a few years before the EORTC study by the Italian Cooperative Group. Uh, it included patients between 1992 and 1996. Uh, they included only patients with high grades of tissue sarcoma of the extremity and the trunk wall, uh, large tumors larger than five centimeters. Uh, the study was stopped early due to a positive result during the interim analysis. So only 104 patients were included. So actually the study, since it stopped early, it included less patients that was actually uh, planned for uh, since the interim analysis showed a positive effect of the, of the adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, 
the administered regimen was epirubicin, 120 milligram per square meter, and iphosphamide, 9 gram per square meter. So you can see the difference in, in the doses of iphosphamide straight away. The first report of the trial came after a median of five years of follow-up. And there uh, it was reported a clear and statistically significant benefit of adjuvant chemotherapy in disease-free survival. Uh, where the risk for disease-free survival was reduced by uh, 40%. You, uh, one can notice here, for example, at two years, the absolute risk reduction um, was 27%, and at four years, it was 13%. Regarding overall survival at the five years uh, median follow-up, it would also observe that uh, uh, the patients that receive adjuvant chemotherapy had almost half the risk of the, uh, uh, dying compared to the patients that did not receive adjuvant chemotherapy. Uh, the absolute difference at two years was 13% and at four years was 19%. However, when a longer follow-up was performed of about almost uh, 10 years, uh, you can see in the graph here that uh, an effect, a positive effect of adjuvant chemotherapy can still be seen, uh, but that um, did not reach uh, significance when this uh, long, longer follow-up was performed. Uh, the question is as to whether the study lost its power due to the lower number of patients included at the beginning. Uh, however, the, the authors reported that um, among the patients included in the attention to treat analysis, there were seven patients that never started chemotherapy, so they performed a comp uh, a comp uh, um, another analysis where these patients were excluded, and and when these patients that did not receive chemotherapy were excluded, uh, a significant benefit of uh, adjuvant chemotherapy uh, was seen on survival. So it, this study had high risk patients, higher doses of chemotherapy, and actually did show a benefit um, uh, regarding relapse uh, and survival at five years, and a bit um, controversial benefit at 10 years. Um, while performing this study, the, the investigators of the um, uh, Italian sarcoma group observed that um, the, during the last two cycles of chemotherapy, the dose intensity dropped. Uh, so the hypothesis was raised as to whether um, maybe the first three cycles of chemotherapy are the ones of most importance uh, on relapse and survival. Uh, so they designed and performed um, a, a, an international study where they um, compared three cycles of neoadjuvant chemotherapy compared to three cycles of neoadjuvant chemotherapy um, and two cycles of adjuvant therapy after the, after, um, the, uh, the operation. Uh, patients were included between 2002 and 2007. Uh, administered doses were similar as to the previous study, epirubicin 120 milligram per square meter and iphosphamide 9 gram per square meter. 328 patients of soft tissue sarcomas of the extremities and the trunk wall were included. And um, uh, the latest uh, report was on the med uh, after a median follow-up of 10 years. The study showed, uh, um, here one can see that the, cur the lower curves uh, uh, respond to um, local recurrences and the higher curves respond to um, uh, distal metastases. Uh, and one could see that um, there was no difference between three arms preoperatively and three arms preoperatively and two arms postoperatively. Uh, <clears throat> it, it would be very wrong, I believe, to conclude that then adjuvant chemotherapy is not needed rather than to investigate whether um, there is a role for neoadjuvant chemotherapy in soft tissue sarcomas. Um, especially now that more, more the number of patients receiving neoadjuvant radiotherapy is increasing, then maybe um, uh, there is a need to switch from thinking about high risk factors in adjuvant therapy to delivering more chemotherapy neoadjuvantly.
And then um, I would like to report a single arm study performed by the Scandinavian sarcoma group, the SSG20 study, where patients with high risks of tissue sarcomas and high risks were defined with, um, uh, sorry, by um, biological markers and the patients received adjuvant chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Um, so the idea was that from a previous study, uh, the group had seen that patients with high-risk sarcoma uh, and high risk was defined by tumor size, vascular invasion, tumor necrosis. Uh, so these patients performed metastasis-free survival of um, 59% and overall survival of 68%. <clears throat> In SSG20, um, the, the definition of high risk was uh, further... Um, uh, improved and there the patients could either have vascular invasion or at least two of the three uh, uh, factors, size larger than eight centimeters, infiltrating peripheral growth pattern and uh, necrosis. Um, patients with soft tissue sarcoma of the extremities or trunk wall were included. The doses administered were doxorubicin 60 milligram per square meter and iphosphamide 6 gram per square meter and six cycles were administered. For patients between 70 and 75 years old, the doses were reduced to avoid excess toxicity. So these patients received doxorubicin 50 milligram per square meter and iphosphamide 5 gram per square meter. Um, the reported um, Metastasis-free survival is after a median follow-up of 3.9 years. So according to previous studies, the expected metastasis-free survival um, was 50%, but with this um, selection of pure high-risk patients and intensive adjuvant chemotherapy, the study um, reported metastasis-free survival of 70.4%. Uh, at uh, almost uh, four years. Um, in, further on, investigating on potential prognosis factors influencing the metastasis-free survival, uh, the authors identified tumor size larger than 10, deep situated tumors, and reduced dose intensity as negative prognostic factors on uh, uh, metastasis-free survival. Uh, it, I think it's very interesting to notice that uh, what the report is that when dose density was uh, reduced under 80%, uh, then the patients had uh, an increased risk of um, metastasis, sorry, have the worsening of their metastasis-free survival by two, a factor of 2.3. Um, to con before I conclude, I would like to discuss also um, uh, uh, an international open label randomized phase three study um, where patients were uh, received adjuvant chemotherapy, either the standard chemotherapy or a chemotherapy tailored depending on which histological subtype their soft tissue sarcoma was. So. Uh, the high type tailor chemotherapy was dependent on the subtype. Patients with myxoid liposarcoma had received uh, trabectidine neoadjuvantly. Patients with leiomyosarcoma, gemcitabine and dacarbacine. Synovial, patients with synovial sarcoma received high-dose iphosphamide. Patients with malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors received etoposide and iphosphamide. And patients with undifferentiated pleomorphic sarcoma received the gencitabine and docetaxel. And the, the idea behind this is that uh, uh, by trying to choose chemotherapy that would be more effective than um, standard chemotherapy, maybe one can improve, uh, improve the outcomes of these patients. Uh, however, as you can see in this, uh, in this curve, so the red curve is patients that receive standard chemotherapy and the blue one is uh, disease-free survival for the patients that receive isotype tail chemotherapy. Uh, and as one can see is that the, the wide um, regimen with um, uh, anthracyclics and iphosomide was actually better than the, the isotype adjusted chemotherapy. Uh, 
Uh, and I think one should not um, interpret this as a negative new adjuvant study rather than as a study that actually shows that um, standard chemotherapy did have an impact on these patients' uh, disease-free survival. Uh, also here regarding overall survival, it was also better in patients that receive um, standard chemotherapy compared to the ones that uh, neoadjuvant chemotherapy was adjusted to their histological subtype. So um, some things to, to, re to, to remember and to um, take home. There is um, soft tissue sarcomas are rare tumors. It's a, a very heterogeneous group of diseases. And this is also translated in, in the different trials and the results of the different trials. So one should be very careful in interpreting different results. We have much more data um, on um, uh, soft tissue sarcomas in the extremities and the trunk wall and very little data on uh, retroperitoneal soft tissue sarcomas. Some experts suggest that one could extrapolate results from the um, soft tissue sarcomas of the extremities and trunk wall uh, regarding adjuvant therapy to the retroperitoneal soft tissue sarcomas. Uh, but at the same time, one needs to keep in mind that uh, uh, the natural history uh, of the disease depend uh, a lot on, on the histological subtype uh, and the localization. For example, in the retroperitoneum, it's more common to have uh, um, liposarcomas and local relapse is more common and can also be fatal, whereas uh, soft tissue sarcomas that arise in the extremities and the trunk wall have a tendency to, to spread in the lungs. Uh, so the results may be from the extremities, the soft tissue sarcomas of the extremities and the trunk wall may not be completely extrapolated uh, in uh, retroperitoneal sarcomas. Uh, but to sum up, I do believe that from the data we went through, there is evidence to, to support that adjuvant combination chemotherapy should be considered for patients with high risk soft tissue sarcomas, especially of the extremities and the trunk wall. Of course, this uh, always has to be discussed in um, a specialized center and in a multidisciplinary conference where patients should be receive an individualized um, treatment plan. Uh, there is, in my eyes, a clear um, support for adding iphosphamide uh, in the adjuvant therapy. Um, even though um, adjuvant chemotherapy aims to eliminate micrometastases, um, there might be a role in adjuvant chemotherapy uh, in patients with high-risk tumors where, um, or maybe lower-risk tumors, but where uh, potential local relapse can be difficult to operate. Uh, and as we said, in, in soft tissue sarcomas, a local or even a, a distant relapse is, is detrimental for the patient and, and fatal. So it's very important to discuss at the beginning and have the most optimal management for these patients. And finally, when um, considering the two neoadjuvant trials we discussed, um, it's worth to um, consider whether um, maybe neoadjuvant chemoradiotherapy might be more common in the future, what is the role of it in the management of soft tissue sarcoma. And it's very interesting to see how um, the management of these patients will be in the future. So I would like, thank you very much for your time and um, think about these patients, remember the data is out there and be critical when you appraise the difference the different reports thank you very much have a nice afternoon Amvi, thank you very much uh, we uh, really thank you for this wonderful presentation uh, we thank all our followers colleagues out there uh, thank you for your attention and for allowing us to come into your homes uh, please remember we are an open access uh, it's a it's a colleague to colleague initiative so uh, if you have uh, 
a nice idea for a presentation or something you want to share with your, with your colleagues, uh, send me an email and uh, we'll see what we can do. But till next time, thank you so much, Andre, and uh, look forward to the next presentation.